Hello everybody and welcome to the first episode of Let's Chat. Uh, This is going to be a much more serious um, thing than the usual funny quirky gaming I do. In this series, uh, I'm going to talk about things that have happened in the news recently and sort of give my uh, input slash opinion, yeah, input slash opinion on sort of how I feel the situation is. Um, I've got three stories in particular. I'll start with the oldest one that I know of, which is two young girls invite their friend over for a slumber party and then the next day take her to a park and stab her saying that they're apparently saying that they are trying to summon the fictional character Slenderman. Now, this is crazy because when I looked into things actually around what happened with this whole story, um, these girls followed Slenderman like mythos stuff from like things on the internet to the teeth. They drew the pictures and other, they, well, they drew the pictures and they started doing all the weird writing on the wall shit. And they just started doing all this weird, you know, weird stuff. And then they were like, hey, friend, how would you like to come over for a slumber party? And then they went and the next day stabbed her like 19 times. And these are like 12, 13 year old girls. This is nuts. Now, I've read in multiple of the articles I've read about this. They bring up a cult, okay? And this upsets me a little bit because they say that, like, reading creepypasta and, and all that is a cult or inquiring about the Slender Man is an occult. Well, it's actually not. It's just a popular thing that two apparently very psychologically unstable young girls really kind of got into or got a little too attached to. And that's the whole thing is it's like, this isn't some weird occult thing. So there, this is a fucking scary story that two young girls took way too far, you know? And another thing is one, you know, wh- where the hell were the parents of this whole time? They're just like, yeah, we're going to let our daughters go out into public, you know, and just whatever with their friends. It's like, how did their parents not know that they were going to the park or something? And when their parents have seen signs, I mean, they're drawing these fucking pictures and doing this other weird shit, and the parents didn't apparently notice. That's what also upsets me, is it's like, where the hell are the parents in this scenario? Where, you know, where's the supervision on all this, you know? Don't these parents go into their kids' rooms, you know, like to vacuum or pick up laundry or something? It's like, what in the world? You know, what's going on here? And it's just really shocking how this just happens. And it's all over this one thing that, you know, at first, to people like me who love creepypasta, is, in essence, I'm not going to say it's no big deal, but it's like, Oh yeah, two girls fed into the story a little too much. But then it's like, yeah, this other, the girl who was stabbed, she's stabilized now, but she could have died. And that's another serious thing is, as soon as something like that happens where someone nearly dies, it you can't just say, oh, it's because they fell into scary stories too much. Now there's a more serious element to it. And it's like, oh man, you know, we can't really just sit here and say, oh my... You know, but we also can't immediately jump to things like it's an occult. Because, yes, there's a convincing mythos behind us, and yeah, people who are easily, you know, enticed into things like that might instantly jump to that. But, you know, we just got to keep our heads on our shoulders and kind of remember how these things may or may not turn out, you know. But we also got to remember this is a serious thing. Like, this girl was seriously injured, and, you know. This is really scary because it's like, what what could happen next? I mean, someone could think they're Jeff the Killer and they could start doing horrible things like that. And that that's a real surrealist, scary way of looking at it. Not surrealist, realist way of looking at it. And, you know, that, that brings up a lot of scary potential for the future for things like that. Because, I mean, all it takes is more psycho, you know, more psychologically, slightly, un, you know, psychologically unstable individuals 
to, you know, do more things like this, which is really scary. But yeah, that was the first story, and that's that's very, oh uh, man, when I first heard about that, oh boy, was I, I was shocked, I really was, and I feel very bad for the young woman who was stabbed. It's nice to know that she's stabilized, though, that they stabilized her, and she's doing a lot better. Okay, our second story, and oh boy, was this a doozy. Um, our second story is recently a soldier was captured, and then they did a prisoner trade. Well, the big the big debate behind this is the guy abandoned his post. He just kind of walked off and whatever. And that's what everyone's so upset about this with. Is Now, I understand it's an American life. You know, we honor every American life. But the guy also just kind of walked away from his post. Well, you know, the big thing about this is, you know, they let go of very dangerous terrorist to save this one guy and he abandoned his post and that's what people are really upset about is it's like well he abandoned his post what the hell and that's where this gets into a weird debacle debating situation where it's like well he's an american life but he also abandoned his post you know what do we do you know and we already we already did the trade so you you can't say oh it takes these backsies doesn't work like that so now there's a big debacle about this, especially with the whole he's an American life, but he also abandoned his post, which I know only a few things about the military and about abandonment, and I know that if you abandon your post, that's really bad. That's as much as I know. But still, though, big debacle behind it. I mean, I know he's going to get in a lot of trouble for abandoning his post already, but the thing is, is now we've also got five terrorists who were put away who are now free and the big debacle behind this is you know where's the right and the wrong i mean yes you know his life was worth a lot but then again it's like you know is how much trouble is he gonna get into i mean it's just kind of a weird debacle and i mean i know it's already passed and i know everything's been settled but there's still kind of a an oddity about it. And I don't know. It's just one of those things where you kind of feel one way about it and then you also feel another because I see both sides of how this could turn, you know. And it's like, you know, when I think about it, it's like, yeah, you know, we honor, you know, he, he's an American citizen. We on, we obviously honor his life, you know, so does the government. But another thing is, it's like, is he going to be dishonorably discharged for abandoning his post? You know, it's like, what's what's going to happen with this guy? No, I don't know. I'll have to, you know, I have to catch up with the story, you know, because this is, this is nuts. And things, you know, things like that happen, and it's like, you know, it's like, what do you do? But, you know, it's, like, it's more like what can you do, I guess. But, yeah. And on to our last story, which just recently happened today, there was a school shooting in Oregon. A man went to, I believe, a high school and, I guess, started opening fire. I don't know that much about it because when I got home, CNN and it was just at the end of the story. And I got, I looked up a little bit of it on other news websites, like Fox News, things like that, and... So far, all I've really gathered is it was, I think it was a high school shooting in Oregon. A guy just starts opening fire, and there were, from what I heard, multiple, and not multiple, but like, like on CNN, it was a kid said his friend apparently tried to stop the shooter, and parents were being told to not drop their kids off, or, you know, people were freaking out trying to drive out of there. I guess it was packed with cars, and people were desperately trying to get out of there from this gunman who I think may have been a student. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, the shooter is dead. I don't know if he took his own life or not. I have to I have to recap on that because I just got home a little bit ago and I kind of got swept up in it. But I have to see. Um, but yeah, I think, I don't know. Um... And this, you know, this this story kind of bums me out a little bit because it's like, I 
I have a younger sister who goes to school, and I still have a friend or two or family that's in high school. And this scares the fuck out of me because what I'm seeing is I feel like our schools might not be as safe as we are told. A gunman can just rush up to a school and start, you know, getting kids, you know, taking them out. And it's like, that scares me because, like, I have a six-year-old sister who's going to school. And with all the shootings that's happened this year and last year at schools, I'm very afraid. I live in a small town in Indiana, okay? And the thing that scares me the most is a lot of these shootings are happening at small towns. And this is really getting to me because, you know, I've got a sister, I've got family, I've got friends, and this just really worries me about the safety of our schools in the future. And I just, the more school shootings that pop up on TV, the more I get paranoid about things like this happening. Now, of course, you know, the gunman was stopped. As far as I know, I think he was stopped by law enforcement. They concluded that the shooter was deceased. So, whether he took his own life or the police shot him, I think from what I've been hearing, the police might have shot him or, you know, took him down. But still, even with that, I think schools, even though they're, we're led to believe our children or the kid, children who will lead our future are safe, I don't think they are. Quite honestly, I think schools should enforce metal detector policies. I think schools should have more than one security officer. My local schools only each have one security officer, and that makes me feel... Not as, you know, when I was in middle school, I didn't feel that protected with just one fat police officer walking around yelling at kids. We need, we need, like, I'd say a fair number be three. At least three school police or security officers or whatever. I think that's a fair number. I think that's fairly debatable. But it's another thing, too, of these people are walking into schools with guns, and it's like, well, our... School security officers are obviously armed, you know. But when there's only one of them, I mean, come on. If a dude walks in with something that isn't a handgun, that that school police officer's not going to have a good time. And that, you know, and that's like, oh, man. But, yeah, um, those are three recent news events that I just kind of wanted to cover on a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed listening, and I hope my insights kind of opened your opinions up to a little bit of interpretation or whatever. But, you know, you guys stay safe out there, okay? I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.